All right, so now it's time to sketch some trigonometric functions. We're going to sketch them by hand. Now, a reminder, trigonometric functions look like this and like this. They've got something to do with the unit circle. I'm not going to go through that in great depth again. But that's what we're aiming for. Nice, smooth sketches that go on and on and on and on forever and ever and ever. Now, in order to sketch these by hand, it's going to be easiest to keep something else in mind. These boundary angles. We've talked about boundary angles before. Sine 0 degrees equals 0, sine 90 degrees equals 1, and so on. Now, with this table alone, it's relatively easy to sketch a trigonometric function given you know that they look roughly like this. All right, so I've gone back to my page. I've got this so I can sort of copy off it a little bit, but we're not really going to look at that. I just want to be able to refer to it, make it really small so you can't really see what all the numbers and stuff are. This is going to be more important, and you should be able to just grab this out of your head. You should be able to create this table or just look at this image straight away. All right, now I'm going to sketch y equals cos x. I'm going to create an x and y uh, Cartesian plane something that looks like this. Now you're going to have to do that by hand. Increments of 90 degrees, at least for this one. In future ones, we'll have to use different increments. And we're going up to 1 and down to negative 1. Now we're sketching y equals cos x. Now it's as simple as either looking at the table or looking at your unit circle. Remember that cos theta is equal to the x coordinate of your dot here. So when we are at zero degrees, cos theta equals one. And now I'm going to go down to here and say, when I'm at zero degrees, this is my, I guess, theta axis, and this is my y axis. But it's not really a theta axis because we're using x instead of theta. Okay, so when the angle, which is x, is zero, cos is one. When the angle is 90, cos is 0. When the angle is 180, cos is negative 1. When the angle is 270, cos is 0. When the angle is 360, back to where we started again, cos is 1. Now, 450. 450 is not on my table. But these periodic functions, they're called periodic because they repeat. So up to the top, down to the bottom, down to the middle, down to the bottom, back up to the middle, back up to the top, and we're starting again. Down again to the middle, down again to the bottom. And now you want to get that nice curve going on. Now I'm going to do a terrible job here because I'm trying to use a stylus. But hopefully you'll forgive me for that. Not too bad. That is y equals cos x. I'll put a little label here. y equals cos x. Now, of course, we can graph y equals sine x in exactly the same way. When the angle equals 0, the y value equals 0. When the angle equals 90, we're looking at sine here, the y value equals 1. When the... Uh, Angle equals 180, sine value, e the y value equals 0. We're going up, down, and you, you know the shape. So without looking, I know it's going to be here, and then here, and then here, and then here. Up to there, down, up, down. Try to keep those curves really smooth. Use this as your guide to what those periodic functions should look like. All right, they are your two most basic periodic functions. You can see I'm leaving 10 alone for now, and I'll leave 10 alone for a little while, but we will eventually draw a picture of it. Next up in a, the next video, we're going to sketch some periodic functions that have been transformed a little bit.